Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation. Let the light of your face shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. We begin with uh, hymn 333, Once He Came in Blessing, hymn 333. your salvation. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worshippers may be seated. The first scripture reading for this evening is from Psalm 117, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, 
and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Thus far the reading of the first lesson. The gospel reading for this evening's message comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. Please join me in the response on your worship bulletin. The Lord will come again in glory. The Spirit and the church cry out, Come, Lord Jesus, come. We continue with hymn number 367, Angels from the Realm of Glory, 367. In the sixth month, 
The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Thus far the text. Last week, we went from one extreme, a barren woman, older, told that she, after years and years of prayer and desire for a child, would now have a son. Tonight, the other extreme, a young woman, a virgin, a young woman who is supposedly, you would think, able to bear many children, but having not been with her husband yet, was not expecting any children until she and her husband consummates the marriage. Again, another person being told, you're going to have a baby. Even a casual reader of Luke would have to ask, what is happening here? Two miraculous pregnancies in a row. Something is going on. Our text brings us to the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. When we left off last week, we were she was in the fifth month. She, Elizabeth, is only three months away from giving birth to the last Old Testament prophet. Yes, that's John the Baptist. He was an Old Testament prophet being spoken of in the New Testament. John the Baptist, whose job it was to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah, who would save God's people from their sin. Gabriel is sent by God to a town so insignificant, believe it or not, Nazareth was never mentioned in the Old Testament. Go ahead and look it up. You won't find it there. It's simply not there. It was, it was a smaller bump on the road than what Lebanon is, folks. If you can imagine that, probably a little bit more like uh, when my wife and I were driving to my former church in Minnesota, and we come driving along, and I see the steeple in the distance. And I said, this must be Fairhaven. And my mother looked out the car and said, where? There's no town. Well, I said, I see a steeple. My wife's nodding her head, yes, that's how little a place it was. That small. Nazareth must have been like that. Gabriel came to the home of Mary, a young woman betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And Gabriel begins with these words, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Now, I'm going to put this in a 21st century perspective of what's being said. For when someone calls me on the phone, someone I have never met, saying something like, Greetings, O most exalted of all pastors, have I got a blessing for you. Click. Huh? Really? Seriously? I mean, yeah, isn't that what we're like? Well, she didn't have that option. There was no click. He was there. Okay? So, I might be just a tad curious as to where the conversation was going with Gabriel, if I were Mary. Sensing her caution... So he says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Pardon me. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Now there's a lot there. 
okay? Even the casual reader can kind of catch that. I want you to think about it because Gabriel just announced to Mary that this child is no ordinary kid, okay? Numero uno, he is to be great, powerful. Folks, this is big, big, big. We're not talking about some regular child being born just like all the other kids that were around being born in Nazareth and even Canaan or Israel at that time. This was something different. He was to be the son of the most high God. Remember, this is one of the things that got Jesus in trouble, wasn't it? When he kept referring to himself as the son of God. Huh? The Pharisees and Sadducees just had their skin would crawl when he would say that. You can't say that. I mean, he, he was bad about forgiving sins on the Sabbath and all that kind of stuff too. But saying that you're the son of the most high God? There's a word for that, my friends. And the Pharisees would say it directly. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. In fact, when Jesus is on trial, remember what happened? The guy tore his robe when he said it to him. Blasphemy. And yet this is what Gabriel is saying. It's not blasphemy. This is the truth. He is to receive the throne of David, his father. Wow. Now, remember, Israel hadn't had a real king for a while. Oh, they had a king, but he was, he was not really that good of a king. He was great at building roads and aqueducts and everything else. In fact, Herod was the one who finished off building the temple, believe it or not. So um, as far as construction stuff, he was great. Spiritually, he was not a spiritual guy. He was in bed with the Romans. He could eat just as easily worship Caesar as he could God. It was just that simple for him. And now, he is to claim the throne of the greatest king Israel had ever known. The throne of his father, David. Four, he is to also reign over the house of Jacob. All 12 tribes were to be his subjects. And five, his kingdom shall have no end. Wow. This is no ordinary child. This is no ordinary pregnancy. This is no ordinary anything. Right? And what's Mary's one and only question? How's this going to happen? How am I going to get pregnant? I'm kind of wondering, I mean, bear with me, folks. Just think about having all of that information dumped on you and you simply say, uh, how am I going to get pregnant again without having a husband deal? I mean, that was big. Don't get me wrong. But what about all the other stuff that he's great, son of the most high God, sitting on the throne of David, reigning over the house of Jacob, Establishing a kingdom that is forever and ever? I guess she hadn't quite absorbed all of that. that. That's what I think when we're told Mary pondered all these things in her heart. That's kind of what it means. She's thinking about all these things. And then as she lived it, was able to see her very son live up to everything that was told her about him. And that wasn't the end, by the way. Remember that uh, when they take him to the temple, Simeon gives them a boatload of information about him as well. All righty. So the rest is kind of based on this question. How will this be? Since the beginning of time, man has passed sin down from one generation to the next. This is what we learned about in catechism as original sin. Psalm 51.5 says it clearly to all of us. 
Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. That's, uh, iniquity is another word for sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, my friends in Christ, not a single generation since Adam and Eve has been able to skip or break this cycle. Not one. Sin has been prevalent in the life of every single human being. It's, it's almost literally in our DNA. Well, in a way, it probably is in our DNA. Passed down from our original parents that we were to be sinners. Not one single generation until, until, my friends, that moment when God broke the cycle. He broke the cycle of sin and death, and it started, it started, my friends in Christ, with that miraculous moment with Gabriel and Mary. When he told her, the Spirit of the Most High will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come. And so the Savior was conceived and born in a literal, sinless environment, and thus became the true Savior of all mankind. He was literally the perfect sacrifice to take away all our sins. No matter how grievous, no matter how small, he takes away our sin. Now, a rah-rah for Mary, because unlike Zechariah, she didn't go, hmm, I really doubt that's going to happen. Instead, she responded with simple faith, saying, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Calm, cool, and blessed. Mary at that moment did become the most blessed and favored woman among women. In fact, I think I could even say among men and women. Because not a single guy up to that point and not a single guy afterward ever had the chance to have that. Not one. I mean, our plumbing's not the right way anyway to, to, be, to have been able to do it, but she received the highest honor that there was and was willing to be the Lord's handmaid. My friends, as we gather tonight, the Lord is calling us to the same faith as Mary, to bear Jesus Christ as the Holy One in God, not in our wombs, but in our hearts, and to bring that boldly out into the world and to let the world see that Christ child in us. Now, a few of us are old enough to remember there's a few that aren't, but how many of you saw that movie, E.T.? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember when he died, he got all gray and everything? But then, but then what happened? All of a sudden, he started to pink up again, remember? And there was that beam coming down from the spaceship, healing him and reviving him, and all of a sudden, E.T. gets up, E.T., go home, E.T., go home. But what was the visual that was there to show you that he was really alive? Remember what his heart looked like? Yeah! I thought that was, that was really a cool illustration. Huh? Because, remember, that's precisely what God, the Holy Spirit, did to each and every one of us in our baptism. Now, it might not glow in there like that, you know, it doesn't shine through our clothes, our skin. But spiritually it does. Spiritually it does. And God is asking us tonight to bear Jesus out into our world. Just like E.T.'s heart was glowing. With Christ in our hearts we can carry Jesus into the world the true light of the world, who takes away the sins of the world. 
And what a gracious blessing that is. We did not bear our Lord into this world as his mother, but we can bear him out into the world from these four walls and share that same joy of salvation with all whom we meet. That's what Advent's all about. In the name of Jesus, amen. May now the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. I'll ask for the offering to be brought forward at this time. As I read the various petitions of our prayer this evening, please respond with the uh, words there, Lord have mercy. You'll see the congregational response is Lord have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the courage and strength to carry the good news of Jesus into the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves one to another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O oh Lord. O oh God, from whom comes all holy desires and all just works, provide for us, O oh Lord, the necessary uh, blessings that we need to carry on our life in this world. Bless and keep us all as we continue to serve you with quiet minds. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn, 335. You may be seated.
thank you again for joining us tonight. And please remember to come again next week. Invite your friends, your family. Come on over. We've got plenty of space. We can socially distance just fine with, uh, with what we got here. Um, trying to think if there was any, do you know of anything else, Marsha, that we need to notify anybody? No? Nope? All good? All right. God's peace. Yes, Gail, go ahead. Just a reminder uh, about Christmas oh, caroling to our shut-ins um, starting at 1.30. Uh, and the way it, we rooted it, uh, we'll meet here at church. Yep. Our first stop will be at Ruth Suites. And then we'll, we'll kind of like do the northern routes first. And then the people who live in the north want to go home. And then we'll do the Colchester folks a little bit later. And, and I think we told everybody... Uh, uh, we will be singing a cappella. That means no accompanying music. But, uh, it, you know, you don't have to be a professional singer. And uh, if you just want to hum the parts, you're welcome to do that because I think the important thing is they see you there uh, wishing them a Merry Christmas. So, yes, dear. Oh, bring your mask. Don't forget those. Um, well, Got to keep it safe, and we're going to be six feet apart, all the good stuff. Keep everybody happy. Yes, Pete. Dress warmly. Dress warmly. Oh, yes, dress warmly. We're going to be really sitting outside. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, see you next Wednesday or this Sunday. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.